hi guys how are you all doing i hope you're in the best of health i hope you're drinking water and minding your business if you're new to this channel my name is any paul and it's so very nice to meet you i make content on student advice medicine lifestyle and natural hair if you're an og you're returning thank you so much for stopping by you have my heart in today's video we're going to be talking about what schooling in ukraine is really like i mean like are they really teaching these guys anything <laughs> Stay tuned and find out. The first regime that we're going to be talking about is the pre-COVID period, obviously, because I mean, like, I know now it's the lockdown season and a lot of things have actually changed, but still, we move, okay? So in the pre-COVID period, um, this is typically what your day would look like. So you would go to class, you would have maybe three paras, four paras, or even two paras. Paras are typically blocks of work, blocks of schoolwork, like your timetable that you have to go through. So blocks of this subject, that subject, and that other subject. So basically, maybe your day would include anatomy double para, and then you have something like a lecture and you have maybe a chilled subject like ukrainian language it's not exactly chilled for everyone but you get what i mean <laughs> okay so like i was saying um for the three power four power two power days depending on which um year of medical school you're in here in ukraine if you are in say your preclinical years which will be like your first two third year you most likely will be shuttling between campus and the preparatory faculty okay so the preparatory faculty is where you will be studying if you were you know learning in ukrainian language i stayed there like i spent like a couple of months there so i know how it could get so basically you're going to be shuttling between the preparatory faculty and the main campus where on the main campus you're going to be having a lot more of your preclinical courses like anatomy physiology and you know and you keep building up from there so basically what you're going to be doing is um preclinical subject anatomy and maybe something you know something really chilled honestly and one of the graces should i say of the preclinical years is you get to spend less on transportation realistically if you were maybe living in the hostels because the hostels here are kind of like situated around the school or close to the school so you don't have to spend like a lot to shuttle to school between school and the preparatory department or the preparatory campus of this university that i'm in and then back you know so it's like Mm, a little bit easy on the pocket you know you get what i mean Sha. so if <laughs> so if you're in the clinical year mm -hmm, this is the year and this is the year where you get to do a lot of work when i mean a lot of work i mean mentally you're working obviously you are doing like a lot of work in your preclinical years as well but <laughs> guy bees like you know where they say water pass gary this is the situation of water pass gary because it's going to be um at some point it's going to be physically tasking and financially tasking as well in the sense that you're going to have to be moving between different hospitals you know like you're going to be going here and then there and then like you're literally all over the place and the Mm, I don't want to say the bad thing, but the downside is that our breaks are kind of limited So you most likely might end up getting there late I mean take into consideration your shuttle time the time to wait for the tram get on the tram Have the tram get stuck in hold up not move or your buses or the buses are full and you can't get on them because people literally Squeeze themselves like guys. I'm not joking, but we literally squeeze ourselves like sardines Inside of the buses and it's not a pretty sight to be honest. So, um let me see like i even made a video about um a day in my life in when i was in fifth year and because of how packed the commute was like i, I couldn't i couldn't even take you guys into the bus because there was no space you just be seeing different kind of body parts somebody's arm somebody's head somebody's no i can't do that to you guys so but if you want like a visual representation of how a day typically goes and you're okay with looking at what the clinical year looks like then you might want to check out this video up 
on your screen so okay. another thing that i was going to be talking about is what our simulation centers look like i'm in venetia national medical university it does have a lot of names but i'm not going to be reading all of them for you right now so please bear with me so in venetia what our simulation centers look like typically is you have like whatever you're going to be simulating and they are designed according to whatever department you're doing the simulation for you know so we have emergency med obstetrics internal med i think and surgery it's quite a jungle between all these simulation centers so i think one of the good things that my school or ukraine generally one of the good things that ukraine generally does for you is it groups your work so you have like the times you're going to be having simulation classes is going to be maybe only simulations for obstetrics and then we're done with that you're moving over simulations for another course you know you can't have like all the simulations at once except you're having oskis i think where you're going to be moving from station to station in tasks i believe i'm not very sure about the oskis because i haven't taken them yet but when i do i will let you guys know how it goes okay so typically the simulation centers are like pretty chilled you go in you you know you meet whatever you're supposed to meet and you either botch it or you nail it and yeah that's pretty much it <laughs> okay so another thing that i was going to mention is once you get to sixth year like final year like i'm in um the the way it's the way your timetable is structured typically changes so you're no longer like studying according to timetables with four paras or three paras or two paras or even one para because they are one para days maybe when you finish all your courses but you no longer will be having one para days now because you are in final year you know so i think that's like one of the good things final year does for you you have a little bit more time but there's a lot of flexibility and this could take a toll on people who already have their day planned what do i mean by this um in sixth year we study according to cycles you know so what we are going to be doing what i do now is i have like three weeks of obstetrics for example two weeks of pediatrics we move over to the next course like that kind of thing so currently i think i'm on my pediatric cycle but the first cycle i started with was therapy that's internal medicine and it took me nine whole weeks guys <laughs> nine whole weeks obviously like internal med is really broad there was like cardio in there rheumatology there were different different things inside of that but where the flexibility comes in is one teacher is saying oh okay right now we're having like the covid regime which i'm going to talk about in a bit but because of that one teacher is like okay we're starting at nine or one teacher is like we're starting at 8 45 still or some teachers are like we're starting at 1 p.m you know and you have to change kind of like tweak your day to match school because like i mean school is your first priority so that is typically what a day in six year would look like like the cycles and whatnot not yeah you're welcome okay so now that i have spoken about what six year looks like currently i'm going to be talking about the covid regime or the covid period what schooling is like in the covid period and typically what school is looking like in the covid period is you join whatever platform you're going to be learning on different universities in ukraine have different platforms that they study on first of all um i think i've spoken about this in a previous video of how we switched like my uni switched from viber to some some site some website that crashed i think it was vnmu website like not necessarily crashed 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 but it couldn't take like all of us at once like and the website was tired but now we are using microsoft teams and typically what it would look like for you is you join this class you're done with this class you join that class if you are in your preclinicals or in your clinical year but not in final year but if you're in final year you most likely will be spending hours on one call because it is a cycle guys my advice here even if you're multitasking like make sure that you have studied or you know where the material is at or you know where what is at because you could be called upon any time to present answer a question or explain the reason why the answer is the answer and <laughs> it is 
it is what it is guys so um that's basically what the covid regime will be looking like another thing i was going to be talking about is the exams and models like for exams and models um we actually yeah a model here is different from an exam in the sense that a model or a micro model they usually call them like micro or mini models is maybe you covering a subtopic under a particular course do you understand so say you're done with the systems and organs and you're doing splanchnology model or you're doing splan splanchnology micro model whatever you want to call it you know this is like kind of an example and if you're doing splanchnology model you most likely will be um answering questions related only to splanchnology so organ system whatever your liver kidney spleen they most likely won't be asking you anything else so the module for splanchnology will obviously be different from the module for like central nervous system or something i don't want to go like super deeper medical because there's the likelihood that some of you watching might just be wanting to get into medical school so i don't want to like <laughs> yeah yeah you get it so um for the exams typically exams would be um say now you're done with anatomy so you'll be having like anatomy exam like your anatomy final exam and then after that you receive credits into your credit book so typically i think um what we also call it here is the zaliko zalikova <laughs> we call it zalikova zalikova knishka it is that was a long word but it typically means a book where you take your zalik your scores like your credits you know so if you were writing an exam how typically what will happen is you're done writing your exams and you get scored into your credit book maybe not immediately because it does take this teachers a good amount of time to combine all of your scores together so yeah you want to keep that in mind another thing on the exam regime is we do have different types of exams so we have like computer based tests this is apart from the mcq and theory questions we have computer based tests usually to be just mcqs like on the computer or mcqs on paper that's like the only difference one of the things that ukraine also does is they kind of give you the mcqs that they ask you before the exams and they have you study that in hopes that you would actually learn it understand it and ace it but as you all know students are students and we will find shortcuts so people should circuit around that and actually cram the answers and just go pour everything out and offload it you know it's sad but it is what it is for exams as well when you're in your third year and when you're in your sixth year you most likely will be writing croc so in your third year croc it will be croc one and in your sixth year it will be croc two and basically writing your crocs writing your croc one croc two uh, there are also a bunch of MCQs, all right. Only that you will get a couple more new questions, and those ones could actually whoop your ass out. So, if you aren't studying, if you're cramming, just like just know that they might not be you. So you have to actually understand to make it make sense. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to be discussing today on that what studying in Ukraine really does look like is the patient interaction. Patient interaction is quite limited, obviously. Um, you get little to no patient interaction when you are in your preclinical years because how much do you actually know, you know? So you most likely won't be getting any patient interactions. And when you are in your clinical year, the kind of interactions you'll be getting um, depend solely on the course and on the type of teacher you have. If you have a teacher that is willing to explain everything, willing to show you how it's done, willing to show you what is what, you would, you will love, love, love it. So, I mean, like, for us, we would have like this setting. I'm going to use this example of when we were studying um, internal med with Suleiko. Professor Suleiko really likes to teach you know she's one of those teachers that actually loves her job and she would literally have the patients in the room and then you ask whatever you want to ask and she would even explain you know so you see a syndrome you don't understand she's explaining all that for you she's making it like she's making all that information into bite-sized chunks and you can actually munch on that and just get it get it okay for some teachers just jump in the room literally because i've had like urology and in urology ugh, but I've even forgotten his name right now. Yeah, and one of the professors in there would literally um, 
dump you in the room with the patient and have you come back when you're done asking or checking or doing whatever palpation percussion or scutation tests that you'll be doing so it's like i kind of thought that was a little insensitive because a lot goes on between patient and med students doctors that don't know what they are doing or know what they are doing and then there's a barrier in communication so um that's one of the reasons why i mentioned professor Sileko as an example in the beginning because she literally has a patient in the room and she's there as well so if there's anything you don't understand if there's anything you want to ask you don't know how if there's anything google translate isn't giving you the right words or right phrase or right grammar for she's there for all of that um so she would explain or she would be like a middleman translator but some teachers are not ready to be all of that so just keep this in mind when you're coming okay this is like one of the problems you most likely be facing overall for me i think studying in ukraine has its perks and it has its downsides so i'm just doing this video so you know what to expect and what to not expect have a realistic view of things i i hope this helped you i hope this gave you some perspective i hope this helped your choice if you're looking to come here if you're looking to not if this is one of your options maybe it will help ukraine rank higher on your list or no i don't know that is basically it for today's video guys thank you so much for staying with me thank you so much for stopping by remember to give this video one like and subscribe if you haven't already thank you so much for stopping by and i will see you guys in the next one peace and lots of love morning my people how are you doing i trust everyone is doing okay we met the little humans today they're adorable <sighs> Thank you so much, Mom. You guys.